the Divas Champion, the Great One. Seems to me like this is the one this sold out crowd came to see. In this video we're gonna talk about Drew McIntyre and Dean Ambrose, we're gonna make a short Smackdown Live review and we're also going to talk about Brie Bella controversy. <laughs> As always, your favorite wrestling show on the internet greatness of wrestling and your favorite host of the wrestling community, the Divas Champion, the reigning undisputed heavyweight Divas Champion, in fact, the great one. Let's get it trending. Life sucks, Divas title doesn't. So I want to start this video by talking about this, The Shield vs Braun Strowman, Drew McIntyre and Dolph Ziggler rivalry. On Monday Night Raw we got a tease that either Dean Ambrose is going to join Braun Strowman or Drew McIntyre is actually going to turn face. This is something that not a lot of people are talking about but there is a possibility and it piqued my interest very much. In previous video I talked about how it's possible that Dean Ambrose is going to join these heel guys but most of you said that I'm missing the point. Most of you said that Drew McIntyre was really affected by Seth Rollins words when Seth Rollins pretty much said that Braun Strowman is using you and Dolph Ziggler is using you as well. And yes, later during the show it really seemed like Drew McIntyre is kinda insecure about that. Now the obvious reason why WWE are doing this is because they want you to watch the Australia WWE event. So right now when you're about to watch this match you kinda have that question, so what's going to happen? Did Will Dean Ambrose join uh, Braun Strowman, Dolph Ziggler and Drew McIntyre? or Drew McIntyre is going to join these guys or at least turn on their partners. Would it make a lot of sense for Drew McIntyre being in the Shield? No, he's not going to be in the Shield, he's not gonna be a member. Having another member in the Shield would feel so out of place. But it does necessarily mean that it cannot happen. Let's think about this scenario. Drew McIntyre joins the Shield, but Dean Ambrose turns heel. So you have two characters switching sides. I think that would be such an interesting storyline. At the end of the day, all we want from Dean Ambrose is for him to turn heel because he's a very boring babyface. I personally want Dean Ambrose to turn heel because I think that makes way more sense than Drew McIntyre actually turning on his partners. But the only thing that does make sense is the fact that Drew McIntyre is going to be a babyface. He is going to be pretty much just like the other face of the company. Like we have a Roman Reigns, the face of the company, and the second to that is AJ Styles. I think. I think Drew McIntyre is going to be that second guy in the future, like Randy Orton was to John Cena. So Drew McIntyre face turn is going to happen, but probably not right now. What I want from you guys is to discuss this in the comments below. Who do you think should turn face or, or heel? Uh, should both of them switch sides or nothing should happen? It would be a shame since they are really teasing it and it's probably just for the ratings or whatever. But I think Dean Ambrose is the one who should turn heel. At the end of the day, Ziggler already has your girlfriend. I do think that Dolph Ziggler has definitely been speaking Whoa. some truth to Ambrose. Aren't you two? Whatever, WWE doesn't make any sense sometimes. <laughs> So on October the 5th, I'm going to be making WWE 2K19 Career Mode Series. It would really mean a lot to me if you would guys check that out and let me know in the comments below if you want me to make a video talking about WWE 2K19, my honest opinions and what I will do uh, with my channel when this game comes out. Basically the content that I would make. I will make Career Mode Series and I have few more ideas in mind that I think most of you would be into it but I don't want to make any promises. So basically if you want a video about me just talking to you guys, talking about 2K19, my plans, uh, my personal life maybe a little bit, uh, let me know in the comments below. <laughs> So let's talk about Brie Bella and Liv Morgan situation. Pretty much people are hating on Brie Bella so much right now because she injured her opponent. Some people think it was on purpose. 
Wrestling fans are so stupid sometimes. I, I, I don't even know what to say. For example, let's start this with a meme. Seth Rollins breaks Cena's nose. It was an accident. And Sting's career. It was an accident. Injures Balor. It was an accident. Brie Bella injures Liv Morgan. Oh my god, the worst wrestler ever. Please retire. Exactly. Personally, I don't blame everyone. This is wrestling. This is the WWE. Things like these happen. And some people don't even realize that it wasn't really Brie Bella's fault, at least entirely. Liv Morgan actually moved her head way too quickly and into a wrong direction. As you can see right here, Brie Bella was trying to kick her into the chest. Unfortunately, she kicked her into the face because she moved way too fast. Now, a lot of people are saying that, well, one kick is okay. Another one is unforgettable, please retire. That's kinda not the case as well. You see, at that point, Brie Bella thought that she is going to kick her in the chest, that this time it's going to work. However, Liv Morgan moved way too quickly again. I think it would have been a better decision from Brie Bella not to do anything at all after the first kick, but accident happened, it was in the heat of the moment. I don't like the Bella Twins, I don't think they are good wrestlers, but just because you don't like them as wrestlers, I don't think you should hate them. If your favorite wrestler did that, you would understand that it was an accident, but because you don't like her, please retire. Brie Bella is a bad wrestler and maybe it was more of her fault than Liv Morgan's, but I'm just saying that you shouldn't blame one wrestler. And let's talk about SmackDown Live real quick. So first of all, we got this new uh, segment show, whatever, from R-Truth copying The Miz, calling it The Truth TV. It was really entertaining, however, one thing I didn't like is the dancing. I don't know. Dancing in wrestling is always cringe for me. None of that. Thanks. And here's the thing with SmackDown Live. Lately, I just, I just don't enjoy it as much. I don't know why, but it's just not as entertaining. You have the best roster, but you can't really produce good television. There are cool moments, don't get me wrong, but it just doesn't feel right. It's been said that the attendance of SmackDown Live is pretty low as well. The highlight for me was Randy Orton attacking Ty Dillinger for no reason at all. Commentator asked Randy Orton, is Ty Dillinger his next victim? Randy Orton responded by saying that, no, I just found his 10 crap annoying. That was good. When it comes to the next Randy Orton rivalry, I don't imagine anyone else right now who could be with him in a rivalry other than John Cena, for example, coming back and Randy Orton uh, capitalizing on a big awaited uh, John Cena's return and trying to destroy it, right? That would be a very good storyline in my opinion, but I think it's going to be Jeff Hardy again. Now, the other highlight for me was, as much as I hate Aiden English turning on Rusev, Aiden English, anything that he was given in the WWE, he made it work. I think he is great. And he pretty much said to Lana, what about that night in Milwaukee? Pretty much saying that they, they fucked. Aiden English and Lana fucked. Rusev doesn't know what to think right now, and in the next episode of SmackDown Live, it's going to be interesting where this goes. However, I gotta say, I have bad vibes from this. And the show ended with Samoa Joe going to AJ Styles' house, but he didn't actually open the door or anything, which I think was kind of a bummer. What was the point then? He was just near AJ Styles' house. Even though it was entertaining, I think it was kind of lacking. It ended in a very boring way, in my opinion. Something about this rivalry that I just can't enjoy. I don't know what it is. I know there are great wrestlers. I, I Maybe it's just AJ Styles being the WWE Champion. I'm kind of tired of that, even though he's one of my favorite wrestlers of all time. I think it's time for a new champ, and it has to be The Miz. And I'm not saying that only SmackDown Live is suffering, because I kind of feel like WWE is not getting worse, because I think the product is getting a bit better, but it honestly feels like they are relying on nostalgia way too much. It feels like a dying company. Honestly, it feels like documentaries are going to be made about this right now. Just like WWE are talking about how bad WCW was in 2000, I think they will talk about how bad WWE was in 2018. It feels like a crappy wrestling show relying on nostalgia because that's the only way they can sell tickets right now and that's what happens when you put all the money into one superstar and John Cena is not here. <laughs> anyway so that's it for today's episode of Greatness of Wrestling. Let me know in the comments below what do you think about Brie Bella's situation and what do you think about this Drew McIntyre and Dean Ambrose situation. Thank you for watching, follow me on social media, the links are in the description, the great one, peace, love and hugs. <laughs>